Okay. Uh, Welcome yeah. The disaster zone. No, uh, no, no disaster zone. Nothing happened. <laughs> that's that's exactly why it's a disaster zone. You spent two it's hours last week doing zero. Nothing. No, no, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah, we did. We, well, we did. We did a lot of stuff. No, we no, should. no, no, no. Nothing happened. Nothing happened except for sleeping. We just two hours straight role playing sleeping. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's turns all that sleep, happened. Scratches his beard. <laughs> That's all that happened. That's that, interesting. That video, <laughs> that video might be put up as session four question mark. I thought it was three. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was two until I actually looked at the playlist and realized that there was already a session three. Oh. Okay. There's, one, there's one I don't remember too. What? <laughs> I don't rem I don't remember how the hell we went from two to four, but okay. That's what Welcome happened. To session four, guys. Yeah. That's so I remember now. Okay. I honestly thought this was session three. Then I realized this is the third session I played in, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. you see, you see, everyone's getting confused now too. <laughs> but okay, there was this yeah. is session four. Let's just session yeah, four. yeah. This is session this... four. Okay, and what happened was. What's up? You guys Figure all. I missed two sessions, and it's only session four. It's uh, last session. The you guys ended up sleeping in the cabin, you know, waiting for Outlander to contact you when he said he would. And he never said he would, so you're just kind of, you know, fooling around in the cabin or whatever. You guys decide. Everyone decided to take naps. But now has come the time when you're all woken up from your naps by a loud knock on the cabin door. Thank you. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> ah. We don't need housekeeping. Housekeeping? I mean, I guess I could get someone to clean this cabin. Oh, um, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Uh, long night. This is, um, um, Outlander? Yeah, that's right. Your good old friend Outlander. How are you all doing today? Can I come into the cabin, please? <clears throat> of course, of course. Um, we, we do have, uh, Fenris on our side. We were able to get that accomplished, so, uh, don't be surprised. And I open the door. Excellent, excellent. Outlander does indeed come into the cabin and you see... Outside, a black van that has tinted windows. He, <laughs> Outlander, aside from, you know, his usual armor, shotgun, great axe, he is carrying a suitcase. A rather bulky suitcase, too. Ah, may I uh, take that from you? It must be rather heavy. Well, I actually... Actually, this is for you. Fenris and Kron are, uh, by the way, they're just standing by, just waiting to see how things unfold. What Thank is you it? Thank you. What is in the suitcase? Ah, glad you asked. You see, you killed Kyle, and that was a shame. So it's up to you to take on his duties, as I think I told you that already. Now... What's in this suitcase are your duties. And he unlatches the tan-colored suitcase and then opens it up. Murdoch? It looks, yep. exa it looks exactly as it did in your dream. <laughs> I don't know how we should feel about the dwarf dreaming of Ellis Weath. <laughs> and then af after he opens it, he... He, you know, he shows it to you. Claps, you know, clasps the case shut and puts it on the table. You know, nice little dinner table that's in the cabin. In this suitcase are 400 doses. 400 ounces of LS wheat. Premium cut. Everything is good. Straight from my client. Now, this stuff goes for about 
20 credits a pop. So, I'm going to be looking to get about 8,000 credits by the time you are all done selling this. If you manage to get more money for all this, then you know what? Keep it. Our client is not expecting any extra money. He's expecting me to deliver him the 8,000 credits. Now, you're probably wondering, well, you got, I'm guessing you're wondering that, you know, being that you don't look like criminals, where do you sell such terrible things as LS Wheat? I, well, I'm glad you asked that, without even <laughs> saying a word, because, where you need to go, where you should probably go is to Lacenda University. At Lacenda University, all the college kids, you know, they're stressed out from all that work they're doing. And especially the graduate students. The graduate students are dreading their military service. Well, some of them are. The other ones are glad that they don't have to do it. All you have to do... Take the LS Suites and just sell it. I don't care, just... Sell it. Any other questions? Um. Yeah, uh, Sornot doesn't have any, but he looks at his companion just like making sure. Are we to be prepared for combat? Will anyone try to take this case from us? Fenris asks. Uh, no one should. That is our turf, but. <sighs> Big ol' Mama Madre's been trying to expand up from the south, so... I don't think she'd be that bold. But you might want to keep it. You might want to keep an eye out. You do this for me. I'll be back here... in a week. You have my money. You give it to me. And then we'll see about... Uh, maybe getting you out of this so-called contract that you found yourself in. Maybe I'll find maybe I'll find some new people to take over for you. <clears throat> Does that sound like a good deal? Yes, very yep. good. In the dream, I, I might have the, spelled it wrong. In the dream, it was Ultra the Tabaxi. The dream that yeah, I know. Happen. That's why I'm not saying it out loud. The dream that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you wouldn't exactly know that that was her name, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> the only person that knows all this is, uh... Stress. Is like, Madra, I thought it was Ultra. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, so... If you guys want out of this contract, we'll see. We'll see. My client is, uh, well, let's just say Kyle got his temper from somewhere. And I realized that you guys were on the, uh, ass end of the stick, as we call it. You know, you didn't want any fight. I listen. I listen. You guys didn't want any fight. You did shoot my knee. That's fine. There's armor plating on that knee. Didn't hurt that much. My bad. <laughs> So, or was that sore not? I I'm afraid to kind of ask, but I think I'm going to ask it anyways. What exactly happens if we aren't able to sell the entire uh, suitcase? Oh, that's... Uh, well, I mean, if I have any more uh, troops by then, then we just take the stuff from you. No harm, no foul. And then we sell it ourselves. But, and this is a final warning, we do have eyes on you, even as we speak. Well, yeah, you have your eyes on us right now. I don't mean my eyes. 
I I get what you mean. I'm just cracking joke. We are pals. Yes. I can crack joke. We're we're business associates for right now. Let's not get too touchy feely until you get me my money and then let's see how things go, okay? Of course, of course. Good. Now. Like I said, Lucinda University is a good place to go. If you want to risk going south and go to Port Baden, try selling to the sailors there. Probably an easier task, but you might run into Mama Madre. That's... That's all I can say, but, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a week. Good luck to you all, and, of course, stay safe out there. And also, don't go to the feds. <laughs> of course not. No, of course not. Outlander leaves the cabin with a cheery smile on his face. The and then goes. Murdoch grabs his gun. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can have another dream sequence. I don't think Finn will let us get away with that one on this edition of uh, Drug Dealer. What, what, what would it be called? Drug Dealers and the Dragon? GTA Hellshall. <laughs> the next five sessions are all in Murdoch's coma dream. <laughs> <laughs> No, we each have a special dream about it, and then it's like, you know, okay, Murdoch has his head. Has his. Has hid? His. I Are you making special. autocorrect in, in, vol in verbal? <laughs> Apparently. Verbal so autocorrect? This is when we find out that Grand Kickass is actually a robot. <laughs> verbal autocorrect? I mean. Than the speaking technology. That would explain why she's better company than a lot of people. But <clears throat> But let us move on. You guys now have a case of drugs. Four hundred doses, twenty credits a pop. Okay. Remember that's not eighty thousand. Did he yeah. ask for eighty or eight? Eight. Eight thousand. It was uh, part of the dream sequence that didn't yeah. happen. Okay. <laughs> so we go to military college, which I am not comfortable with, at least as the face of the group. I not that good for ongoing military career possibly, but Well, the thing is, that's where Percival is, and I really don't want to accidentally run into him while we have these drugs i well i'd rather he not know about this thing we're doing well first off at the same time the, he might be able to help us i don't know if we sell the drugs we're not going to be going out willy-nilly and being like whoa we have drugs <laughs> second off we are most likely only going to be having one person show their face and it's going to be someone that doesn't even go to school looks at cron for a moment and the rest of us will be, like, hooded bodyguards. Possibly spreading information. The way the way we did it is we usually found some shady place. Maybe if, uh... Before he gets his car start up, it might be a good idea to ask if Kyle was ever at the sender. You know what? I'll go do that. I'll go do that. Kron runs outside. Uh... <laughs> Sort enough, like opens opens the door for uh, for Chronic. Kind of sits in the doorway to make sure he can hear what's being said. Uh, make a perception check because the van's uh, a little bit. Sure can. Yeah. I pull out my cell phone. Fenris is just standing by. He's just wanting to know what the hell's going on. He probably knows how to handle this. I think that's... <laughs> don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> wow. He might. I don't know. All right, Why? So you... Why do I waste my good rolls here? Hey, hey, this is good, okay? 
you hear out as you're hearing Kron and Outlander discuss the topic of where to sell. Outlander mentions a CD bar called the Vesuvius. And in that CD bar, they often have a sort of back room where they do the deals. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Kron thanks uh, Outlander for his time, and Outlander drives away. So, Kron, what did you learn? We had to go to a bar called the Vesuvius. And at the bar called the Vesuvius, all we have to do is, well, probably flash the goods and then get access to their back room where they do all the dealings. <clears throat> Alright. So that's plan B. What is plan A? We figure out how to not sell the drugs and do something else. <laughs> and... He's being very vague here, knowing there are eyes on him. So he's kind of making it sound like he wants to just keep the drugs and get 8,000 some other way. Hmm. So, and then, uh, and then, like, he, uh, Sorna gives, like, a little wink towards, uh, Sorna, uh, towards, uh, Kron, and is like, mm. like, let's go inside. Yeah, yeah. Kron goes inside with you. And then it's like, the inside of the cabin, uh, he looks at a uh, founder and says, like, So, now that we uh, have the goods, do you have any suggestions on our next step? In simple words that could possibly be explained as we walk? We sell the drugs, make the money, give the money, and then see what happens with Outlander. Shit, okay. Plan, plan B it is. <laughs> well, I'm kind of waiting to hear back from a text message because if we decide to do uh, Lucinda instead, it, I mean, they say that it might be easier to deal with the sailors, but we might also deal with the other territory lady. I Mama mean, Madre. I have no idea what this, who this Mama Madre is, but going into any rival territory would indeed be vi inviting a fight. Well, this uh, Vesuvius place sounds like a pretty good bet. Simple I'm just bar. saying in Lucenda, I have a connection to Percival in there. And he well, might have connections to uh, the kids that might be interested in this stuff if we decide to sell. I personally do not feel comfortable going into a military school with drugs. It's not a military school, is it? It's a school that you go to, and then after you graduate, you go to the military. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not a military. There's no specific military schools before you go into the military. It's a... And that's not uh, metagaming. That's character knowledge. <laughs> yeah, that is that is character knowledge. Everyone here, being from Cradonia, yeah, knows like... that it, no matter what college you go to, you either have to go into the military before you go into the college, or you have to go in there after. Right. But that's only in Credonia. If right. you go, if you go out of the country, maybe go to a co a conglomerate college. You, you you're just gonna have to pay out the ass. <laughs> Which isn't yeah. you know unusual. For uh you know you know it's you Colleges. know fiction and. All the other things, yeah. Definitely not how the real world works. Definitely um. not. Definitely yep. not. <laughs> okay, so... I... I say that we scope out this CD bar first. Only because, um... If we can avoid selling to minors... Or very close to being minors... Where it's even more illegal... Uh, what is... Wh okay, sorry. I think we already discussed this before. I want to say it was just the adult age based on race, but... Yeah, yeah, we did okay. discuss that. I just wanted to make sure. Like, like, Kron, Kron is six years old, which would be a top... <laughs> which is, you know, 
a mere child in human years, but he's he's of drinking age in kobold years. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure it's like we don't want to run into any elves in Vesuvius. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, us one hundred and fifteen year old elves. Yes, exactly. So if we go, if we go to this bar, we have better chance of more legal clients if they've got like this whole business down for it. Ah, uh, but how do we get into bar? Is the question. We go to the bar. We probably want to go ahead and flash our uh, badges that uh, the Outlander gave us. See how far get that gets us, and then if we need to pull out the drugs, we pull out the drugs. <clears throat> Sounds like a plan. Well, there's one other problem. How are we going to get there? Uh, That's going to take he, two days to walk back, ain't it? About. He, he does a Google search of uh, where the, Vus uh, the Vesuvius the Vesuvius is on camp the, on the Lucinda University campus. Piece of shit. And yes, it's gonna take a couple days to walk back. Or you can call uh, an Uber. Uh, well, first I first I look at the <laughs> Vesuvius. <laughs> first I look at the Vesuvius thing and see uh, like restrictions of entry. Uh, they just require ID to make sure you're of an adult age. Are any of us not legal in our race's age? Uh, shit. <laughs> I think I'm technically an old man in my race, but you know, it's fine. How old is Sora not? I mean, I, I, want, I, I don't remember. I want to say I'm like 18, but that's like, I forget how long goblins actually live. Uh, goblins are older. Are they? Are they? Think, or am I thinking of gnomes? I might be thinking of gnomes. Probably like, gnomes. I want to say goblins age closer to uh, orc scale, which is like 14. 75. Yeah, yeah, they they die pretty young. Uh, And it's like, Kron, Kron's six! <laughs> He's six years old. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just like, oh. You're, uh, okay, so you're ten years into your adulthood. Yeah. I'm just like pretty sure I'm an old man by Goblin standards, but you know, started school. I started on um, school late. Uh, raised by non-Goblin parents, it was odd life. Hmm, that does sound like a pretty odd life. Either way, let's uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, start. Does anybody really want to take an Uber with drugs in the car? Do we really have well, a choice? It's, Uber. it's the same thing, either way. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. If we walk back, it takes two days. Then we have three days to sell the drugs, then two days to get back. We take the Uber, we risk the Uber driver knowing what drugs smell like and wanting to call the feds. Uh, I actually smell the briefcase. Does it smell like drugs on the outside? Nope. <laughs> Okay. Okay, never mind. So, do we, uh... Do we have enough money for an Uber? It's a two-day, uh, drive from the middle of nowhere. Well, that's two-day walk, though, so that's the equivalent oh, of... Sorry. It's like three-hour drive? Yeah, roughly. From the middle of nowhere. Do we, do we have enough funds for a three-hour Uber? Most likely being charged. I don't know. Looks up, looks up Uber prices <laughs> for like a three-hour drive from current location. Hmm. I mean, it's up to you. I'm fine either way. Yes, yes. I'm, time. Time is the biggest thing here. How yes. long do we really think it's going to take to sell 400 doses of Ellis wheat, or whatever this is? Well, there were 400 people in my Kovald clan, until some random adventurers came through and reduced us to a mere 20, but... Uh, Sardot looks at his companions, 
Fenris shrugs. But that is just one. That is just one dose, and we often bought beer in multiple quantities. So some of these students might be buying more than one dose. Well, well, yeah. I, I highly doubt we were going to sell one for one. I was thinking maybe more like three or three to five per one at least. Mm, that depending sounds... on how new to the drug they are or how fucked up they are. I don't know. Ah, yes. The old just one crack deal. Yeah, see, what we do is we charge them with 35 at base, and then we tell them they get two for 50. Mm. Then we cut even either way. And we make it seem like they're paying less, but even then we're just breaking even. Even then we're making $10 or 10 credit profit. Exactly. Mm. Gives yeah. us more room to make deals, and he puts up air quotes. That way we can sell faster. Well, aren't, aren't you all the little entrepreneurs? Fender smiles. It's it's good skills to have. It is a good skill yeah, to have. I'm working on try, trying to do some connections here, so. It's like, if we're forced to do this, we might as well do it good. I'm still playing around on my cell phone. So, yay, nay, Uber. I still didn't hear the price. Yeah, no, that's why. I'm well, you guys that. need to pool your credits together. No, we need to hear the price first. <laughs> ah, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> a three hour drive. How much is that? That would be expensive as shit with an actual Uber. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's say that would be like. 40 baseline 40 bucks i mean it's like 10 it's like 10 for an hour drive if i remember correctly like 10 15 you must live in that's a awfully che cheap I don't that is that very is. cheap yeah i also haven't taken an uber personally oh okay yeah no no you need ubers to Tim. <laughs> yeah i do need to text my co-worker yeah i could text him and see how much he charges <laughs> text uber john <laughs> No, no, I have a coworker for that does Uber, uh, yeah. on on the side. To be like, how much would you charge for a three hour drive? He'd probably be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't even do that. But uh, no, you know what? Let's make it five hundred credits. All right, all right. Pull, pull out credits. Let's uh, let's figure this out. That's five hundred for the entire group, correct? Yeah. Okay. No, well, I have like a hundred credits. <clears throat> and I've got two hundred. So, uh, what starts oh, walking? Why we... He hasn't really bought anything. Let's okay. start. Let's start walking while we count these credits. The less time Let's we have on this... Save some money by, you know, walking as far as we can walk, and then... Yes. Exactly. We walk eight hours, and then we see how much left we have to be driven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm the little capitalist here. <laughs> yep. Fenris opens the door and says, well, let's get on then. So if we have like 370 credits before Fenris and Kron, which I assume both have zero, uh, close enough to Let's zero. see, Fenris definitely has zero. Kron, let's see. I don't know if they pillaged him, so. Kron has 50. Okay, so we have 420. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, really? <laughs> <laughs> is that the serious math? Yeah. What the okay. shit did we? What? I was just Wait. spitballing here. Seriously, is yes, I love it. None. We have four hundred and twenty <laughs> credits. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if we walk eight hours by foot, 
That's like one and a half normal speed. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag just blaze. It, it took me a moment to even realize that I just said that. I was like, all right, so we're like 370, and then it was like, all right, he has 50. Shit. So yeah, we need to walk a little bit. Yeah, let's see. If we walk a whole day, how far would that get us? A whole day? Uh, aside from a shit ton of blisters. Well, no, would... no, no, sorry, like eight hours. Like the... Like, uh, we could probably we, we could probably low like, we could probably lower the price to four hundred. Yay! We'll have twenty credits by the end of this. <laughs> four, with four people contributing, everybody gets five credits back, and we'll. Hey, you gotta spend money to make money because you know if assuming we. Are you okay? We work on making a profit from these drugs. Yep. Mm-hmm. See, what, what makes me worry with this is that we're going to have to spend money to get into the Vesuvius. <laughs> well, well, actually, I got a text back now, from uh, Percival, right. and he says to meet him at the one dorm room. Oh, okay. Let's, uh... So, so we've, like, walked eight hours, and we're all just, like, tired as hell. It's like... So, let's make sure it's a van so we can sleep in there. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, what was that, Murdoch? Uh, you said I retained the knowledge of LSW. You of did! A knowledge rule. You did retain the knowledge, yes. Do I know if Dwarf Fortress is more fun when you're stoned out of your mind? Yes. <laughs> you know completely... Are you dipping into the supply? Murdoch? I'm thinking I could give lessons to Dwarf Fortress and charge extra. Murdoch. <laughs> oh, no, no. I like his idea. Give lessons on Dwarf Fortress and charge extra. Oh, my God. While they're stoned, so they really like it. See, what you do is you would label it as lessons for Dwarf Fortress. That, and, you, and they pay money for that. And then <laughs> say that you're going to give them an enhancer for 30 extra credits. <laughs> You a legendary mason because you've got me stoned out of my mind. Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. I love Horrible. it. This is great. So, right. Sin, when you, when you decided we were going to play modern day Halshaw, did you expect us to become drug dealers? No. Along? <laughs> it was not my plan all along, but I decided this was the plot that was easiest to follow. Given the setting, oh, yes. so drug dealer. It's like okay, we could either, we could either have something be you know a problem of you know what you saw at the hotel. We could have another campaign with dragons, or any other myriad of things. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Let's make this a magically fueled drug adventure. <laughs> What's well, even better? A drug fueled most... magic adventure. A drug fueled even magic adventure. Better that like the cobalt is six when we're doing this. It's like ah oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know you got to start him young. Except that's <laughs> not young for him. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, no, this is. I figured this was the easiest thing to follow. And honestly, yeah. I'm 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 still just kind of winging it here. Don't know how to feel about the fact that the easiest thing to run is a drug lord campaign. <laughs> I played. I, I think I may have played too much GTA Vice City. Fair a enough. little too much, but anyway, yeah. So you guys are walking along. Everything is fine. Car, you know, you're walking along the highway. You can you can hitchhike if you want. Take your chances with Not, some... No, no, no. We have the money put together. <laughs> I'm heard not yes. gonna hitchhike. <laughs> Murdoch heard yes. <laughs> Do you want to try to hit... Why we shouldn't hitchhike. Hold Can on, you... hold on, hold yeah. on. Yeah. Murdoch can have the freedom to try to hitchhike, though. Oh, yeah, sure. He can hitchhike alone. I mean, if he wants to. 
I'm just you saying. Fucking it's a ditch everyone. <laughs> you could. Do you want to ditch every? You can be there ahead of time. Do you, do you want to ditch everyone and hitchhike? Hey, you can start giving door fortress lessons now. Yes, <laughs> I do. Okay, you know what? Make me a. Ah, oh, shit. This is gonna be really, really Where's weird. My... <laughs> Am I pretty enough to get a ride? <laughs> Make me a persuasion. I don't think you have the cleavage. You know, I mean, no, no one's paying attention to you. You're you're too you're too plain and unassuming. Uh, I I roll one of my pant legs up. <laughs> okay, get a plus two bonus to your next one. Can you use precipitation on him to make him look so? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to assist him and make him sparkly or something i don't know well how did you do it to uh your character when in the other campaign that was just to the eyes right yeah yeah i don't know if his if he'd have eye contact from a vehicle but i don't know i mean you could just make him himself sparkly like, make him clean. No matter how <laughs> clean he is. How much time is passing between these roles? Or are we going to get to the very Get around. I get two minutes ahead. <laughs> That'd be great. You guys just see him pull up. Go into, the, to, go into like, a stranger's car and then suddenly drive, like, a block. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, yeah, perfect. Perfect. No, no, it's not that long in between each one. It's maybe like half an hour. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so you can make him sparkly, Lucina. You can make him sparkly or to attract attention. Okay. Yeah, I'll just make him like a little disco ball. <laughs> Alright, Murdoch, next one you make with advantage. <laughs> oh, no. More <laughs> 11s. Hey! Oh, no. <laughs> Holy fuck! Lucy, so Lucina put on like a fucking rave. Oh my god! <laughs> Not only am I hitching a ride, I'm probably gonna get laid during it. <laughs> See, because you're throwing a because you're throwing a rave, you get a hitchhike in a limo. <laughs> you know what? I like that idea. Yeah, yeah, a limo pulls up. I'm trying to think of a way that could explain all five of us being able to get in the car. I was just gonna have a van pull up, but you know what? No, I like I like your idea, a limo. <laughs> okay, Murdoch, this is your hitchhiking thing, so you gotta do the conversation. <laughs> Ooh, I really hope it's like a rented limo, so we can just sell drugs in the limo. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, a limo does indeed <laughs> stop on the freeway. And rolls the window down, and you see a, hmm, you see a short little finger just kind of inside this car, just kind of motion you closer. Hey there. And as you get in closer, you see that the driver, dressed in a very nice black suit, is a gnome with red hair and a <laughs> monocle. <laughs> hey, wait, hi. You put on quite a light show back there, stranger. I sure did. You can thank my lady friend for that there. Ah, lady You're friend. For a ride, if you might help us. Well, yeah, that's why I pulled you over. That was some fancy stuff, and you know what? I like it. I like how you were doing things. I mm -hmm. put on a little bit of a magic show myself, but not right now, at the moment. You know what? Where are you headed? We're going to the Vesur... <laughs> the Vesuvius. The Vesuvius? It's supposed to be Vesuvius, but... You know what, Vesuvius? Oh. It's fine. It oh, doesn't yeah, matter. Okay. Vesuvius. Yes, I'm going to yeah, the... Vesuvius. The Vesuvius, huh? All the way in Lucinda? Mm-hmm. We're looking for a fun time there. I was just about to go there to see if anyone would rent this limo. In order to, uh, you know, prom night and whatnot. Huh. I'm sure we could help with that. 
You can? Oh, well then hop in. <laughs> okay, now we're selling drugs in a limo. <laughs> 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 nope i no this is good i like it but yes you all do indeed get into the limo fenris is just like what the hell is going on kron's like what the hell is going on lucy's going what the hell is going on <laughs> lucy's going what the hell's going on we're so not, not sure how to feel just... about this <laughs> yes there are actually reclining seats in this limo holy shit this is the best limo ever oh well not not reclining seats but you know ones with the little uh the little footrest oh man does this have like a built-in telephone are we gonna go super high tech no but it does have a bar <laughs> oh shit we can like charge entry for a limo party and sell the drugs in it so you can, those you fancy can... ones with the light inside the limo already there yeah there's a light inside the limo no 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 like the they change colors along the line. Oh, oh, you're talking about a dance floor. Kind of, yeah. No, there's not that. It's not that fancy, oh. but there is a bar, and indeed there are, recl well, not reclining seats, but foot resting seats, and I mean, if you guys want to try to make this a little, little drug dealing operation, you could try asking the driver. You, you know, there's, there's options, guys. Think of them. <laughs> so we're not uh, complaining about no, it I... if Murdoch wants to procure a business deal, I will not stop him. Okay, we, we help him rent this out, but we rent it to, like, party goers from the college that, you know... Yeah, so while they're partying, we steal their wallet. I like the idea. That's <laughs> what? exactly no. what was going on in my head. Thank you. Was it? No. We were going to okay. sell drugs to them. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to do he that, sure. Money, who cares? I'm... Yeah. Okay, so we're not going to do the drug deal thing, but now you just want to steal from people. Hey. Ever said we had to be efficient. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Look, I'm going to go yeah. back to the student loan idea if all we're doing is trying to get money, but all right. <laughs> you never had that idea. That's oh, true, yeah, you that's didn't true. have that idea. Oh, that's a metagaming thing. Mm. Yeah, but I yeah. still have the idea in my head, even though it's like... Ooh, shame. <laughs> what, what Next roll is made at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go to the Vesuvius and go from there. Okay. Okay. So, it's about a two-hour trip at this point that you've been walking, you know, and... Driver's doing peacefully, uh, peaceful driving, you know, he's not going aggressively overboard or anything. It's actually a very smooth ride. A very comfy ride. And then Michael Bay explosion! No! Ba -da -da -da. <laughs> ah, good old John Cena. And... You eventually do arrive upon a familiar site. The buildings and various other decorations that note you're on the campus of the Lacenda University. Alright, well. Here we are, Lacenda University. Alrighty. We'll go and find some people that might want to rent out your limo, and we'll see you. Where will you be staying? You know what, I'll, uh... Hmm, that's a good idea. You know what? I'll just stay at the bus station. Alrighty. And what's your name? And oh, my name? Also, uh, yeah. My, my name is Andrew. And can I also have your number so that we can call you if we need you to actually pick him up in a specific spot? Oh, yeah. It's... Murdoch, wink, wink, nudge, nudges. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, it's one eight hundred five six seven, and then three six zero one. 
Am I going to have to check the phone to see what that is on the... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm just looking at my keyboard here, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to do like 1-800-LIMO or something, okay? I had an idea, but then I decided to not have it. Okay. <laughs> what What is this? <laughs> Why are you writing it backwards? <laughs> Why did you also backwards. fail at writing it backwards? <laughs> Go look. I mean, we're looking. It's it's right there. You you <laughs> did it all perfectly except for the eight. You put a seven. I know. Feel your shame. Disadvantage <laughs> on your next roll. I look out the window to find trees. <laughs> there You're are outside the limo already, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You guys are outside the limo. You're at. I go back the... in the limo and I look out the window to find. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He. What? 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 Did you forget something in here? No. 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 I'm okay. Just... Make a perception check. <laughs> just trying to get rid of. At me. disadvantage. Wow. <laughs> You're not that disadvantage at finding. You do find trees. Okay, that's all. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, are the buildings labeled easily enough to see the numbers on them? They are not. Nah. You probably have to go up to them and they, the label might be on the door. He looks at his uh, Google search of the Vesuvio to see if there's an outside picture of it. There is indeed an outside picture, and, and then you will know it, it because it has a large sign saying the Vesuvius on the front in multiple colored letters. Just had to make sure. And you do see a you do see a statue that's just a triangle, kind of off in the distance behind the building. He looks to see if he can see that same statue. Or... You do. You are at that statue. Oh, shit. Alright, so from here, at this random triangle statue. Make an intelligence check. You know, triang tell. triangulate the position, or, you know, whatnot. Triangulate the position from the triangle statue. Yep, there we go. Yeah, you're easily able to tell where you need to go from the triangle statue, just based on that right. picture alone. Alright, so, that way. And he points in the direction he we're supposed to be going. Okay. Uh, you're, Are you doing that on your phone, Lucy? Yeah, I'm just curious on how far I am from that building. It comes up with the results and your direction. Did you post the directions to it or just, you know, just well, search I'm the building itself? He knows, uh, I'm saying I'm here. Where okay. is here to there? That makes sense. Okay. It's about a 20 minute walk. That's not too bad. As opposed to the 10 or so that the Vesuvius is. Oh, also need I remind you that, or need I say that it is late in the afternoon. Okay. You guys slept in very late. Is there any sort of business that needs to be taken care of? And he looks to like his companions. Before we go to the Vesuvio or Vesuvius or whatever it's called to try <laughs> and start this late night deal or whatever. I, Fenner speaks up, I am actually going to see about something here. Okay. Do we get any more detail or are you just going to tell us the results later? I will tell you the results later. I am going to investigate that arbiter that we saw at the warehouse. I have a friend here. Do not worry. I shall be back here. Uh, uh, let's make it about midnight. Okay. 
I will be here and I will start waiting. You guys can oh. do what you need to do. Okay. So, as Fenner starts to walk, I was like, all right, we're down our protection, so we need to not be risky. <laughs> Well, how about we get inside somewhere? Uh, Percival texts me. He says that he's going to be in the one dorm room in building 50A, which, according to my phone, is like 20 minute walk, at which I don't time, think is that bad. At what time did he say? He didn't really give me a time. He said he was in class, but that was, I don't know how many hours ago. It was like right before you set out. So it's been about three hours, okay. you know, or more. So, Plus, if it's late afternoon, he might be in the room by now. I don't know. Well, if we go there first, I'm sure that we can find our way back to getting to the Vesuvio. I, I understand uh, about where it is. <clears throat> so, we go to building A first? Yeah, it's 50A. It's dorm room. Hang on, I gotta scroll on my phone here. Uh, oh. two fifteen. Okay, so we go there first. Did he say? Did you tell him that you were possibly bringing guests? Uh. Should we find of? somewhere else to stay? Well, I told him I was in a bit of a bind, and I was hoping that he could tell me about people I might be able to sell to. I didn't give him any more specifics than that. It just, he said that he might be able to tell me about some classmates around here that like to buy things. Okay. So we send you with one other person and the other two keep the drugs and stay out of sight. Well, I'm very good at keeping out of sight, so I think I should automatically default to keeping out of sight. I mean, Zornod and Murdoch, you both know Percival. Although, I don't think he cared for you too much, Zornod. Uh, I, I don't. He, he seemed like okay guy. We kind of, we, we never really personally spoke. He kind of kiddingly joked around with me a lot, and it was slightly annoying. He did it in good spirit, though. I think I'll stay with, uh, Kron, and we will, you, you two go talk to Percival. You two were good friends. I think. Hmm? Uh, what now? I think, I okay, think, both uh, of them, both of the, both of the people both, left. Both of the people going to... Great, great. Well, um, same reason, there was background noise. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's been... He's been gone a little bit longer, though, so... Okay. Well, we can just go under the... Well, Kron and Sorna can discuss the plan. Okay, so we stay here with drugs, stay out of sight, yes? Yes. We oh, okay. we just look normal. We can walk around campus. We can uh, take in some of the sites, possibly get a drink at the Vesuvio. Ah, yes, that would actually be a good idea. Why don't we check out Vesuvius while they check out Percival? Yes. I just... We do not need to start trying to make deals yet unless the opportunity presents itself. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Right. Do not worry. I am not so good at making deals. Deals are bad for me. I'm, I'm not very persuasive, man, but I understand business well, so we'll see how that goes for me. And this is where we're going to have a party split! Yay! Don't we love Yay. those? Balloons. You know, because you're never supposed to split the party. Except when you do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Smack! Murdoch, you can, you can speak. With your with your voice. What food? <laughs> oh, you have food. Never mind then. Go <laughs> ahead and mute, mute yourself. Are you sure? I, I can't talk my... like this. No. I will mute myself while the party is split in the other direction. Okay. 
Yep, yeah, okay, well, that decides which direction we're going in first. Okay, Percival is the goal right now. Lucy and Murdoch, you have been volunteered by your compatriots to go there. Mm -hmm. And as you're walking around, you're checking it out, you know, people are... People of all races and sizes are walking around, talking about their classes, notes, whatnot. And then you finally get to this small... Eh, I won't say small. It's about a five-story apartment building. Hmm. I certainly hope uh, 215 means it's on the second floor. Probably assume so. And it, it doesn't have a lot of decoration. It's got a plain, normal lawn that surrounds the building. A few sidewalks that lead up to the entrances. And from what you can tell from the outside, each floor seems to have... Uh, eight units. Okay. Uh, am I allowed to just go into the dorm building because it should be 50A? Yeah. I mean, you can just try to go into the dorm building if you want. It doesn't seem to have any security features. Okay. There, There is a person at a desk, though. That when you get into the lobby, it has a nice blue carpeting. There's a person sitting at an oaken desk that is kind of encased in its own small room. And this person seen? is an older... Let's, let's make it a... Yeah, you know what? Halfling. <laughs> it's an older halfling lady. She looks up from the papers that she was having, or that she was writing on, and she goes, Oh... Yes, may I help you? Hi, I'm looking for dorm room 215. Ah, yes, 215, that is upstairs. Second floor, and it will be the second door on your left. Thank you. And you are quite welcome. Is there stairs and an elevator, or just stairs? There's both. Murdoch, you want to take the elevator stairs. or the stairs? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Someone might be hinting that she's not exactly physically yet adept. Hmm. Yeah, you climb the stairs. <laughs> and indeed, you do see room 215 right as you go up those stairs. I knock on the door. The one that was the first to the left is room 216. Anyway, you knock well, on the, the door? One with the one that's labeled 215, yes. Okay. Yeah. Who is it? You hear a very familiar and heartwarming voice call out from inside. It's Lucy. Lucy? Really? And you hear the unlocking of a lock from the other side of the door. And when it opens, you do indeed see your good old friend, Percival. Percival is a human with short black hair that is kind of, kind of slicked back. And he has a warm, friendly smile on his face. And he has a nice toned body but he's wearing just a t-shirt and some khaki pants right now not even socks or shoes hey Lucy and hey can I come in yeah and Murdoch too oh man this is hey, great friend 
Oh, it's good to see you, good buddy. And Percival, yeah, yeah. Percival motions to give you a hug, Murdoch. Oh, fuck yeah, I'll jump up there. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, God, those you dwarven hugs, man. They're always so good. Yeah, come on in, you two. And his his dorm is, well, to be expected, kind of small. Mm. Living room basically consists of a couch, a TV, that is on an entertainment stand, as well as a slightly homey rug, you know. He has a kitchen that is kind of inside the living room as well. Kind of in like a separate corner. And then he has a hallway leading to his bedroom. Alright, so what brings you two? Come on, sit, oh. sit, sit. He offers you seats on his couch. Before we start any conversations, uh, do you have any roommates or anything that are here or expected to come in anytime soon? No, no, no roommates. Because I know I seemed a little cryptic with my texts earlier. You but... were kind of cryptic, yeah. We've been told we're being watched, so I don't know. Uh, obviously, sending a text could be bugged, so I didn't want to do it that way. Uh, what, There's... what, okay, uh, what, let's see, what kind of trouble are you in? Uh, I mean, what are not... you, what, okay, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, what supplies are you talking about now? Uh, I'm talking about the, well, recreational kind of supplies. <clears throat> oh, oh, rec, oh, Ellis Wheat. Mm. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people on the campus use it. I use it sometimes. Well, you do. A little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, sometimes it gets stressful and sometimes I just want to lay there and, you know, kind of trip. Well, as it just so happens, buddy, we've been roped into a little business. We don't want to be in it, but we do want to get it done to get out of it. All right, well... Oh, wait. Why? Wait, are you working with Kyle? Huh? You Kyle? Kyle? Yeah, he was the one I bought from. Sort of. Working for Kyle's upper friend. Oh, you're working for his client. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh... So sometimes I've arrived to his little hangout a little early, and sometimes I hear him screaming about things, you know? That's just how it is. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know any friends that... Either A, like smithing and dwarf fortress, B, like LS Wheat, or C, like limousines. Are you still playing dwarf fortress? Oh, hell yes, you know it. <laughs> you I remember having to try to pl pry you away from that, but man, I could never do it. Gotta let me build those doomsday devices. You do, you do, I know. Too much for Was me to dive into. Was there a Dwarf Fortress club in our schools, just just by chance? There was not. Damn. You were, like, the only person in the entire school that played it. Oh, shit. I gotta change this. <laughs> but... So, yeah, do you know anybody? Oh, I know plenty of people. Like, if you go to the Vesuvius... Man, okay, they got a... They got the, what they call the back room. Mm-hmm. That was what usually where we went for to buy from Kyle, and you now he gave us, you know, he charged us about fifty credits, you know. It wasn't too bad. I could only buy a couple hey. cred, a couple of doses at a time, but uh, because gotcha. you're a friend, I could sell you some of the doses for about thirty dollars. Thirty? Wait, wait. 30. Wait, how are you... Are you sure he wouldn't mind that? I'm relatively sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, well, I mean, you're a friend. I mean, everybody else at the campus, yeah, we can still sell it at like 50 or if that's what Kyle was charging. We don't want to undercut him too much in his own uh, place, but you're a friend. So, yeah, I could sell you some uh, 30. <laughs> 30? All right. Well, uh, do you have it with you right now? No, that's actually with Sornot. Oh, Sornot's here too? Do you remember him? I do remember yeah. Sornot. Ah, oh, how is the little guy doing? Well, his uh, vehicle got a little busted up and he's looking for a new ride, but other than that. But how did his vehicle get busted up? That was a sweet ride. Oh, I'm not quite sure. I mean, we kind of. We had gone to. He went on ahead. We took a bus. Our bus crashed. And when we caught up to him, his bike crashed. We don't know if something hit him or. I mean, he told me, but I kind of forgot. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit, you guys. You guys have been on a long adventure. A bus crash? Yeah, half of it, buddy. Holy shit. Oh, man. Okay, yeah. You know what? I'm going to the Vesuvius tonight. You know what? I'll mm -hmm. take you with me. And Just I... don't let your buddies know that we gave your supplies at 30, okay? <laughs> you think I'd like be... Like I said, it's a, You think it's I'd be that weak? Discount. You think I'd be yeah. that weak? I know how to do the business. Come on, it's me, Percy. And the, besides all this, you got any party animals from school? Oh, I have a whole host of party animals, me amigo. But they'd love a fucking limousine, huh? <laughs> they would probably love to rent a limousine, yeah. You know, they... Uh, one of them yeah, is trying to take his... Driver if they're gonna be. They're, they're gonna... One of them wants to take his girlfriend over to pro her prom. Well, the designated driver is the limo driver. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the idea. <laughs> well, I could give them a call. I've got some. Met a new friend that's looking for some service to provide. Oh, really? What type of service? Limousine service. Limousine service. Okay, well, uh. What's the number? His number? I yeah. have it if you don't. 1 800. So Murdoch, uh, actually, Murdoch, the way you write down stuff, I, I better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I wrote it in a mirror. It's fine. <laughs> oh, you wrote it in a mirror. How that works, okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll uh, give this guy a call. Tell him Here. good old Murdoch sent you. Murdoch? Okay. Even did though we never gave name. him our names, I yeah, don't Yeah, I was going to say, did you? In fact, tell him his Murdoch name is Andrew, the Sparkly but... sent him. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, he'll know what that means. Yeah, he'll know what that means. And Percy does indeed go on his phone, and it rings, it rings, it rings. Well, you know, that's what you assume since he's waiting. Oh, uh, yeah, hi. This is, uh... Oh, what's his name? Andrew. Oh, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Hi, Andrew. Uh, my name is Percival, and I'm a good friend of Murdoch the Sparkly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I, do, I don't want to rent out your limo personally myself. I'm pretty good where I am, but, but I do know that a bunch of kids around campus could be looking for a limo, and if you advertise yourself around here... I know at least one dude in building 50C who wants to take his girlfriend to a prom in a nice fancy limo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can I can give him a call and tell him to, you know, spread the word. Have you uh you waiting at the bus stop? Okay. Yeah. That yeah, sounds good. All right, bye. All right, well, I have a few texts to make, but, uh, yeah, this is great. You know what? Here, while I make these texts, okay, you guys tell me 
you know, whatever you want to tell me about this adventure, because holy shit, a bus crash? Yeah. And yeah. as you tell him your story, we're gonna pro we're gonna perspective shift over to Kron and Soranot. <laughs> so what's gonna be great about this is that they all go oh. over to the Vesuvio later that night, and we're already set up in the back room. It's Possibly, like, yeah, man. We'll get you set up in the back room. It's like Soranot's already there in like drug lord attire. <laughs> Gets like a him cane or some shit. <laughs> All right, All right, so what is your plan for us uh, scouting this place out? Just go in. By the way, I'm here. texting you real quick. I don't know when you'll get it. Yeah, well, while you All text right. him, I'm going to be right back. I, too, can make loud clackety clacks. But yeah, when it comes to uh, when it shift, I don't know when you'll get that text message. Right. But uh, yeah, Kyle charged. Kyle charged like fifty dollars a pop. Oh uh, hell, and... we're gonna we're gonna under we're gonna undercut him. Big. <laughs> uh, you might want to tell him he doesn't know Kyle's dead. <laughs> I think that was obvious with the charges part. Yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, just kind of keep that in mind to when you're selling to them. Uh, you can decide on your own if you want to undercharge his prices right. or if you think you can get the full profit of the 50. But we, we charge Percival thirty. Okay. So. <laughs> I just got back. Nice job, Murdoch. <laughs> Goblin killing. That <laughs> I like the idea that we just have a three-way group chat. <laughs> so. We... Well, we have but... a five-one in real life, so why not? <laughs> She does have a point. But yes, okay, we are... Okay, I'm back now. And... Okay. Alright, well, you you lead the way. I am uh, not so good with the talking. Uh, neither, neither am I. Why the hell did we do this? <laughs> <laughs> because they know Percival. Hmm, do they? I don't think any of us are good at talking. I mean, technically my charisma says I am, but no. <laughs> Hashtag 8 charisma. Kron has higher charisma than you, Murdoch, and I'm just going to pat you on <laughs> I'm just going to pat you on the head and be like there there. It's all right. I think Kron <laughs> has higher charisma than Sorna in that case. Kron should be the face. Well, how <laughs> oh, how, how much charisma does Sora not have? 8 Oh shit, Kron should be the face. <laughs> I don't want to Okay. 16, well. but I'm not there. I you mean, have 16. Kron has I... 10. Wow. Okay. So So Kron is going to be the face. You are going to have the drugs. Man, all right. blame all the phones <laughs> making these kids less social. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that I was born with a slightly disfigured face. <laughs> kind of the goblin life. Ah, it doesn't lower your charisma. You just got to make up for it with force of personality. <laughs> I think his uh, his tone doesn't help. No, no, it doesn't. We're supposed but... to get the personality from cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, okay. okay so, so since what? you are since you are not good at talking, and I am not good at talking. Let's just scout uh, the place out. We go in. We get a beer. We get a beer. Rock, and... paper, scissors for whose talks? How the fuck do we do that on roll 20? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Roll a d4 and whoever gets higher. We can roll a d2 and get, you know, uh, Yeah, that's true. All right, well. Whoops. 
I rolled a d3. <laughs> okay, well, I guess Crown's doing the okay. talking. So, so, so here's the plan. We go in. We see. We we just we just watch for a while. Mm, we yes. see if anybody goes into a back room or a side room that looks ominous. Yes, and then, yes. And then we go over to there and we ask about it. Or we ask the bartender and very conveniently, obs conveniently, uh, what's the word? Conveniently vague words. Okay. You know what? Yes, I, I, I shall try that. Yes. I think that you're going to speak better than I am. Just because I don't have, just because you don't have an annoying voice, I'm sure somebody finds Cobalt hot. Hmm. I wish someone would find Kron hot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, after we get the deals done, we'll see how much extra gold we have. We'll get you laid, Kron. It'll be okay. I hope so. <laughs> this just turned into Sword Hot trying to get Kron laid and strip. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be wingmen for Kron and Sornot. <laughs> <laughs> Murdoch is just spamming chat with his messages. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, Sornot, you and Kron indeed go into the bar. And... As... You go in there. It's kind of early. There are a few kids enjoying drinks in there. And the bar has nice hardwood floors as a normal bar would. As well as, you know, your typical bar booths. They have cushy, they have cushy leather seats that are stuffed with good amount of fluff. And the tables are kind of rough. But they also do not look very tough. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you have a few rounds. <laughs> Dude. I don't know how much money we have for a few rounds. Well, you guys. Well, got you. Fortunately, did manage to keep all oh, wait, your money. You got here for free. Shit, you did right. get you, you did get here for free because of Murdoch's absolutely fabulous display. <laughs> that is true. Kron is only two feet, two feet six. Two feet six year old lizard should get absolutely hammered. Any drink? <laughs> uh, he's two foot three. My bad. He's two foot three. Well, still. So he's actually, I think he's smaller than Sora, not even. Uh, just barely. You're in a college campus, it's dollar draft night. <laughs> oh, yep. And I have, what you know are what? The, what are the fantasy football teams? Well, here's the thing. No, dollar draft as in draft beer is a dollar. <laughs> I'm just asking in general. Oh, okay. Fantasy football teams? Well, you have the Mercadian Masks. And you also have the Cyclonic Counterspells. Because you see here, football isn't just... You, you, there is no such thing as football, okay? What instead happened was the Wizarding World invented a sport that is called Magical Hell. Where, <laughs> basically, it's just a giant free-for-all between two teams flinging spells left and right and using weapons if they want to. And, of course, it's training weapons, and there are magics in place to make sure nobody dies. What, uh, so are those the two teams that went to the Ultra Bowl this year? Mm-hmm. Yep. The Cyclonian Counter Spells and the Mercadian Masks. Mm. Okay. All right. So he gets up on he, he gets up on the bar, uh, he gives, he put, pats down a seat for uh, Kron to sit next to him. Kron indeed the... climbs up there and joins you. 
and, and he puts the suitcase in his lap, and then you leans over on top to the bar. And I was like, "Can we uh get two of our two two of the best draft we got? Two of the best draft? That'll uh, be that'll be under under what what would the price be? The price would be about twenty credits. All right, all right, and uh." He he uh, puts forty credits on the table, and just like he looks across and says, "Do not get absolutely wasted just yet." No, just just to limber up. I get what you mean. And indeed, the bartender, who is a slightly chubby orc, mm. but he's also muscular enough that he looks like he could still kick your shit into next week. I mean, all, all orcs look that way, to be honest. Also true. Yep, he passes you a couple beers. Mm. This one is called the Absolutely Fabulous Brew. Uh, so or not just take small sips while looking around? It tastes, it tastes like a decent beer. It's definitely not a light beer, and definitely not Bud Light. <laughs> I just think of those like Bud Night commercials that have been going around. <laughs> Alright, and as you look around, you just see people are starting to get into the get into the bar and within about fifteen minutes it starts getting pretty noisy. Mm. And you do notice uh, make a perception check, actually. Alright. I just like the idea that, like, throughout all this, we're just having this group text. Let's see if I can roll good. You do. You do roll well enough to notice that there are... You see a kind of small splinter break off from the crowd and go down a hallway. That you assume uh, led to the led to the bathrooms, mm. given uh, that there's a sign above it that says restrooms. Sorna looks at a uh, Kron. How wasted is Kron currently? Kron, you see that Kron has barely even touched his beer. All right. Uh, Sorna looks at Kron. And is like, all right. There's a uh, what a little splinter off that way. I know it says bathrooms, but. That was a large group of people to go over at once. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is this kind of bar. What large <laughs> group of people? Sorry? What large group of people? How many How many people splintered off into the restrooms area? It was about five. Uh, which is which is shady enough in a bar. Yeah, no. Um, Unless they're all women. <laughs> you know what? Sure, they were all women. Let's add some confusion to this. <laughs> so he, he he looks at a crowd and is like five people went over that way I understand that women like to go in there at the same time for some reason but yeah, it's even... still pretty shady so you... I'm going to go check it out <laughs> alright I'm not going to go into the women's restroom don't worry All right, then. I'm not that kind of man even though you might be no judgment I mean, I, I can't go invisible, so I imagine only Fenris would do something like that. <clears throat> okay, so he, he gets <laughs> down from the bar stool and is like, Okay, seriously, watch this and make sure it goes nowhere. Kron nods and he's actually on the lookout now. So yeah, he, you, like... you see him eye... You see before you leave, you know, he, his, his eyes, uh... He starts... He starts eyeing the place up, you know? Yeah, no, and by watch this, I mean I gave him the briefcase. Actually, are, like, uh, the doses individually packaged? They are. Um, I just want to, like, quickly open, open it and take a few doses out and hide them in the jacket just in case. Uh, oh. do it. Make a stealth check to do that. And by a few, I mean, like, one. Like, not not one. Like, how big are the doses? 
they are one ounce and they are in plastic bags. Right. Piece of shit. Kron right, will. So you, Kron, Kron will. Uh, Kron is gonna assist you. You know, kind of give you. Roll that again and let's see if you get a higher number. All right. Piece of shit. Piece of shit is right. Okay, so after they mess with it a few minutes, it's like, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Be careful, be careful. Yes, yes. Some people did look over at you, but they didn't see anything. Right. It, you can... it just looked like he was trying to fix my jacket, probably. Yeah, yeah. And as you go to the hallway, you do see now that there are restrooms, and then there's a kind of a curtain, and there is a muscular. There's actually a dragonborn, a brass-skinned dragonborn, standing in front of it. <coughs> So, uh, Sorna just, like, just, like, messes, messes with his shoulder, make sure he's all dried off, his, and he walks over and is like, <clears throat> Ah, hello, sir. Hmm. Hello there, he, or hello there, goblin. Is, is, uh, this what some would call the back, back room? Hmm. His eyes narrow. Who wants to know? Friend of Outlander and Kyle. You see him quickly look around the room. Do not mention those names here, Goblin. Not at, le at least not at lo out loud. They were not mentioned. Hmm. He nods at you. I have... So... A friend of a friend, huh? I have a suitcase of stuff that might be better suited in that room. What kind of stuff? The normal stuff they would bring around here. Hmm. Mm. Kyle you... has met some... Uh, all, my friend of friend has met some sort of uh, <clears throat> accident. So... I'm here to make sure sale is correctly done. Hmm, I get you now, I get you now, okay. Do you have the stuff with you? No, I wanted to, to make sure this was safe before I brought them over here. Bring the stuff to me. Of course, of course. And, uh, I go back and I get Kron. Then I bring Kron okay. and this. I, I, I basically everything that was over there now comes over to the. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Open it up then. <clears throat> uh, I open that up. He takes a look at it. Nods. And then you. And then he actually moves and moves aside and pulls the curtain with him. And past him, you can see a carpeted lounging area. And there are actually the five women that you saw enter this hallway. They are in there. Mm. Thank you, sir. And I uh, close the back. I, I close the The case. curtain? Or the case? No, oh, I yeah. close the case and I enter. Okay. Yeah. After, after you and Kron enter, indeed, the Dragonborn goes back to standing guard. Right, so, uh, what all, what all does this room look like? S some chairs? There are indeed chairs, booths, there is a fancier, more polished bar in this lounge. And there's also a little stage. Mm. 
the women look at you too. All right. There is uh, there's two elves. One Asimar. One tiefling. And one. Hmm. Let's make this one a human. Yeah, why not? Right. So, uh, Sorn Sorn uh, leans in the Kron and is like, "All right, if they wish to buy, they are selling at fifty, but if you wish, you can lower it to forty. As uh, they are, and and he he kind of laughed and he was like, hmm, they are." Special women. He he may, he he says it like he's saying in air quotes, essentially. Oh, okay. You, you know, it's like, oh yeah, this is this is what we're selling it for. But you're special, so you get you get lower prices, even though that's the normal price. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about gender wars. <laughs> I think someone has an opinion on this. <laughs> yep, that's the opinion right there. But uh anyway. So, hey, hello boys, one of the elves says. Ah, uh, yes, yes, good. Good. Hello. So, what you got there and how'd you get back here? Hmm? Ah, yes. Well, I'm sure you know Kyle. Oh, we love Kyle! Oh, we do love Kyle. What's happened? Wh wh where is Kyle? Uh, he, he got delayed on business, so he sent me and my comrade instead. Ooh, okay. Well, what's your names? I am Kran. And this... I, I give, like, a little tip of the hat even though I'm not wearing a hat is like I am sore nut sore nut ah uh, yes well I'm Esmeralda this is Gracie the elf goes to the next elf that right there is Gabrielle she points to the Asimar that right there is Lakeisha she points to the tiefling and then that, she points to the human, is Amy. <laughs> God damn it, Strax. Stop. Ice fire. Hell fire. <laughs> oh, shit. I've been watching that for five straight days, you know. <laughs> Different just the song not, not that song in particular but the whole soundtrack and clips and shit it's a brilliant soundtrack i'm addicted to that movie <laughs> it is a good movie but anyway all right so what is uh so what you got there ah uh, yes well we have your typical product the ls wheat and now I know Kyle has charged you 50 credits before. Yeah, yeah. He he says he usually charges other people 70. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, how about this? My associate and I here, because you are very lovely ladies. How about we charge you only 40? Ooh, I like it. Okay. And, uh, have you ever tried your own product? No, I have not. Mm -hmm. Never on a job, I say, but it's always interesting to dabble. It is interesting to dabble. Hey, why don't you try some with us? Mm -hmm. He... He looks at Kron. There is a definite no expression on his face. 
I mean, and then he turns back to the girls. The, like, the thing is, though, you also see Kron kind of, kind of eyeing them up. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, he uh, collects the money and exchanges it for the doses. Yep, there was two for each. They wanted two each. So right, you have so collected a total of 200 credits so far. No, if they wanted two Oh, each, wait. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's my bad. 400. 400. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we're pulling nine out. We're pulling ten out, but Sorna isn't going to use his, so we'll put it back later. Uh, right. yes, three ninety left. All right, it, well, well, there will be three ninety one. Just Sorna isn't going to. Sorry. No, no, no. no they no. She they wanted two for each of them, so yeah. there will be three eighty nine because Kron is most likely going to be using one unless they use one of theirs on him. Well, hey, you know, thank you for the doses. All right, why don't you uh, come on? Why don't you sit, talk with us for a while? Mm. You know what? Of course, of course. How could I resist such a uh, pleasurable company? And let's see, Kron, make this roll. <laughs> Actually, or not, because I accidentally posted it in GM rolling. That's fine. But uh, yeah, he sits, and they they laugh and giggle a little bit at that pleasurable company comment. Sornada goes and closes up closes up the case, and he kind of just uh. He sits not far away, but like a little bit farther away, so they can all enjoy their company. It's very obvious that while he finds them enjoyable, he's gonna let Kron has have his moment. All right, and now because of that, you and Kron are in the company of these women, and will perspective shift. Oh, you don't don't time that just because you know it. All right, there, Lucy. Disadvantage on the next roll. I already have disadvantage, so what's that? The lowest Double disadvantage! Rolls? Yes, three rolls and you keep the lowest one. You roll two d10s instead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's what happens if you get quadruple disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> and then if you keep it up, then it just keeps getting, you know, cut to two d6s and then... You get a fucking one. Eventually I just, eventually I just take off HP from your character. <laughs> Lightning strikes. <laughs> yep. But anyway, yeah. So, as you and Lucy finished tell Murdoch, as you and Lucy finished telling your story to Percy, he he's actually been pulled in. Oh my god, that's actually really, that is really cool, guys. Holy shit! I is never. Cool? Yeah. Doesn't well, no, it probably doesn't feel cool after getting pulled into something like that. But you guys met an arbiter. I mean, that's so cool. I mean, I've seen them, but I haven't actually talked to one. Oh man, have you seen their swords? I know, right? Damn, and then, dude. And then a shame that you have to be magic to make those things. I'd kill. I would too, man. And then he makes the uh, igniting sound. <laughs> Murdoch and Percy having an Arbiter sword fight. <laughs> you guys are having an imaginary Arbiter sword fight. Uh, do a do a strength check. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, you you do manage to win against Percy, and uh, you know what? How do you win? How do you win against Percy in this imaginary sword fight? Have I seen Star Wars on my? <laughs> you have not seen what Star swords Wars, no. Are you swinging around out there? That's the real question. They're they're not real swords. They're just invisible. You know, like pretend. Yeah. Mm. They're even doing pretend clashes and whatnot. You know. <laughs> oh. Oh please. Oh wait, no. How do you finish him? By this sword of Aerith Mikiarist, the dwarf child, I strike you down. 
And where do you stab your sword? His tit. His tit? Ah, he cl he clutches his breast. He's like, ah, no, I have been... Or, ah, no, I have been slain! Ah, curse you! <laughs> curse you, Murdoch Hammerbeard! Yeah. <laughs> Well, way to go, Murdoch. That's, you know, one less sale that we have now. <laughs> really? Oh, hey, look, I'm magically back together, guys. Yeah. Hey, well, fancy buddy. that. Oh, speaking <laughs> of sales, we should really get to the Vesuvius soon. Mm. Yeah. Maybe and, just hmm? a few seconds longer. A few seconds longer? Why is that? Yeah, Um. I just got a text from Sorenide. Um, his one buddy might be getting lucky right now. <laughs> well, shouldn't we all be getting lucky? Come on. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like we'll see goes red from that comment. I mean, come on, it's not that hard yeah. to get. It's not that hard to get laid over at the Vesuvius. And per that's what Percy says as he trails off into his bedroom. Oh, that's right. He's got to go get some change of clothes on. Mm-hmm. When you cut, when he comes out, you do see him in a. A, a black trench coat and he does have some light body armor on you also see he has a rifle and two scimitars as for the rest of his clothing it's just a simple black casual like a business casual outfit you know what kind of trouble do you think we're going to get into needing all that scimitar and guns and all that? I mean, hey, you guys are carrying your weapons, right? Huh. Yeah, Lucy, you aren't you to. used to this? Murdoch's, open it. Murdoch's been openly carrying his, his weapons. I mean, hey, you know, we I'm... might get mugged on the way. I mean, I don't, I don't know. All I know is that I like carrying around my weapons when I'm out. Out, okay? I mean, yeah, I have these daggers, but I use them more as letter openers than I do actual weapons. Well, some of us aren't as magically talented as you. Right. And... Now it's time for you two! Actually, no, Percy would lead you right to the Vesuvius, never mind. <laughs> yep. He go. So you guys enter the Vesuvius, and it is very crowded. People are watching the... What the fuck did I call it? The sport? Magical Hell? Yeah, yeah. I think that was it. Yeah. Everyone's watching the Magical Hell Ultimate Finals. And... It, it's a really good-looking game. You see that there are plenty of spells being flown around. <laughs> Some guy is shooting fire bolts out of his hand, l making his hand look like a gun as he does so. You see a mage conjuring up barriers to protect himself. And you even see what you assume would be an Eldritch Knight because he's encased entirely in old-style plate mail swinging it around a sword while dismissing other people's spells. Guess I'll go up to a stool and order the strongest drink they have. The chubby orc looks at you. Uh, strongest drink for an orc? Yeah. Uh, let's see what I got. Let's see what I got. That'll be probably 100 credits or so. Deal. Alright, here it is. Orcish Rothgut. Sure smells like it. I'll down it. Make a for make a constitution save. And you do have advantage because this is poison. Oh. So that's twenty four, I think it's you are still hammered, but you're not down. Uh, you're not down and out. Oh my god! Is, does he still? <laughs> I didn't think he'd still do that. <laughs> That's amazing. How I could never do rot gut. 
Percival looks at you, Lucy. Well, I mean, he is a dwarf. What do you expect? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, Murdoch? Murdoch, buddy? Huh? Y you okay there? Who are you? It's me. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, listen, uh, you wanna go, you wanna go get some of the good stuff? Mate, I've had the good stuff. Sure, let's get more. <laughs> Waiter? Two more. <laughs> we do not have enough money for two more. Stuff. I don't think you have, yeah, you don't have the credits for more than that. Oh, waiter? One more. He has credits for one more. <laughs> yeah, Alright. Oh, no. oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so, you down it? I think that was all your credits. That I got all 29 credits. credits left. Oh, wow. We're okay. Good. Okay, yep. So, you down it. Uh, make me a fortitude save. Or, fortitude. God damn it. Constitution save, but you do not have advantage. Oh. Oh. Because you already have a lot in your system. Oh. oh. That's... I'm, I'm pissed. I'm <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Murdoch, everything goes black. Oh, God. He's back in the dream. He realizes this was another dream. <laughs> <laughs> he sees Leonardo DiCaprio spinning atop. Not I a goblin invasion already. Yeah, I have on the floor. In the box. <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> you have the strength to drag him like somewhere safe so he doesn't get trampled on. Percy does. Uh huh. Hey, per oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, god. Okay. Mur okay, Murdoch. Uh, just, just <laughs> lean on me. Lean on me. Wee! <laughs> okay, okay, come on over. Lean come on, on over. And Percy does indeed start dragging Murdoch's now unconscious body towards the bathrooms. <laughs> Lucy, as you follow, you see at the end of the hallways with the bathrooms... A black curtain and a dragonborn, a brass-colored dragonborn, standing in front of it. The brass-colored dragonborn looks at, sees Percy, and pulls the curtain aside. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks, buddy, thanks, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tend to my friend here. Uh, you could let her inside though. And the Brass Dragonborn looks you up and down, Lucy. And then he kind of gives an approving nod. By the way, Percy, before uh, I go in there, how much did you want for yourself? Uh, just a couple doses right now. What's a couple? Just, like, three? Ah, uh, two. All right. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Remember, I mean, Kyle's not going to be able to sell it to you at that price, so. I know. You know if you want. Oh, I know. I'm taking advantage of that sale, but I I usually only get one dose, and then you know, kind of just spread it out. But nah, at that price, I'll get two, and then spread that out. All right. Okay, buddy. Okay, Murdoch. I'm just gonna. Oh, God, I'm going to have to yank back your beard, and... Oh. <laughs> I have to hold... The, I'm oh, gonna have oh to... no. Don't, don't. Not in the toilet. No. Murdoch, three you're... seconds, wasteful bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, it doesn't matter. You are... As soon as Percy gets you propped up above a toilet with your mouth facing down, you start letting loose. <laughs> That's dwar orcish rot gut, man. I'm gonna have to get really you. I'm gonna have to get you a. To I'm gonna have to get you a shit ton of water or something when we get out of this, man. And Lucy. So Murdoch, you're basically gonna be disabled for the rest of the session with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Well. Yeah, Lucy. I'm you. I can see Soren on and all them. You do. You see Sorenot <laughs> sitting at the bar of this lounge. It has nice blue uh, carpeting with some good tables that are in there as well. And some open booths 
for people to sit at, as well as a fancy bar. Sonot is sitting at the fancy bar. There is a... Yeah, human woman attending the bar. And then you see Kron. Kron is... You see that he is just wiggling around on the ground. And then he's surrounded by these five women who are also wiggling around on the ground. Talking about what all the, the world did talking, I walk into? talking about all the pretty colors, and something about a butterfly. <laughs> come, come, come over here. Uh, hi, hey, Lucy. You might, uh, you might want to come sit over here. I don't know if it's safe to be in their general area right now. I don't know cobalt information too much, but uh, are they having an RG or something? They did. Hey. Hey. <laughs> They well, did. It's, it's gonna be messy in here for a few days. Don't bring a UV don't don't bring a UV white in here. Yeah, they they, they it, you could tell there's clothes flung everywhere. Oh god. Just come sit over here. I think he's happy. Uh, he, and yeah, so or not yeah. yeah, Kron did do some LS wheat. How how many doses did he take? Just one. Just one. Out of out of our batch? Alright. No, no, not out of your batch. One of the women offered. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. you, you, you still have uh, f- uh, 388? 490? 390. 390. No. 388, because, no, uh, well, yeah. Um, 388, because. Percy's purchase. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And. After. Uh, let's say half an hour of this terribleness. Percy and Murdoch enter. I should say Percy enters dragging Murdoch behind him. Hey, Lucy! Do you want to clean him up a bit? Yeah, I don't know if I have the strength for that, but yeah, I'll use precedentation on that. <laughs> yep. And you guys want to stay at, stay in this bar for the night? I don't see why not. If they let us. And calling out dwarves, alcoholics, referring to me that. You just Wait. knocked yourself unconscious with alcohol. <laughs> You're the one that drank. Because it's true doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why ale is called a dwarven water. <laughs> ale is called dwarven water, that is true, especially in Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> Even the babies eat the ale. Why is... Are you really <laughs> drawing, like, HP bars water. down there? One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> more than HP bars? This is a full-on fucking side-scrolling fight. Yeah, I see that. Is she could... What is she doing? Is that an Eldritch Blast? Hadouken. Oh. Hadouken! <laughs> I like how you have Kron with the dual-wheeled pistols. And the little scooter lancing. <laughs> the little scooter lancer. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit, but yeah. You know what? We'll uh, we'll call it here. Why did I become evil? You're not. <laughs> You're just sort of. Sort of evil. <laughs>